Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Zach Peterson, I'm a technical consultant with Altium, and today we're gonna to talk about board thickness. Now in a previous video, we looked at some of the technical data in a uh, PCB material data sheet, and one thing that we didn't look at in detail was the overall thickness of your board and what your thickness of your layers should be. This is actually a really common mistake to forget to specify the board thickness and the layer thickness correctly during the design phase. We're gonna look at what you actually need to consider in your PCB stack up. So let's get started. To get started with your board thickness and uh, figuring out what your layer thicknesses need to be, you need to decide first, what is the total board thickness, including solder mask and copper weights? And then also, uh, how many layers do you need? So how many layers do you need is sometimes one of those magic questions and it depends on how many plane layers you need, it depends on how many signal layers you need, how many different uh, uh, high speed or low speed protocols you might have. For now, we just wanna look at the basic entry level four layer board. And uh, hopefully that will help you see some examples and some strategies for figuring out what the, uh, the thickness of your layers need to be and what the board thickness needs to be. So typically when you have your board, you've got a layer of dielectric and a layer of copper. And these thicknesses are actually constrained by the manufacturer of your laminate. So when you create your stack up, you're adding in another layer on top of this and another layer on top of this. And then these will be coated also with copper. And so here we've got our basic four layer stack up. Now I've intentionally drawn this center layer a bit thicker because this is generally your core layer. And your core layer is typically thicker and it then is bonded to prepreg layers. So we have prepreg above and we have prepreg below. So prepreg is like the glue that you would use to fuse multiple cores together if you were taking this and you were building a much larger stack up. So I could take this block here and replicate it above and below and then just kind of keep going and going and going. So the challenge here when you're building your stack up is to decide what should your layer thicknesses be or what would you prefer is probably the better way to state it. And what does the overall thickness have to be? So the overall thickness depends on, of course, here I have my copper weight. And then on top of the copper, I've also got a thin layer of solder mask. I'll just draw this with a straight line. Then there's also the copper weight in the internal layers and then of course my dielectric thicknesses. So the standard, and, or at least the uh, historically uh, normal board thickness uh, that's been used in the past is 1.57 millimeters or 62 mils. So this is the standard board thickness that pretty much everybody goes for as just a basic entry level board. One other common thickness is one millimeter. This is actually standard thickness for many PCIe add-in cards. Your fabricator, if they're able to create a 1.57 millimeter board that has a standard construction, they're able to create a one millimeter board too. They can also do two millimeter. They can do some other combinations of thicknesses. Just make sure that you consult them first to make sure that they have a standard stack up that they use if you need something really odd. Maybe you need like a 2.5 millimeter thick board for some, for some reason. If that's what you need, you need to make sure that you combine core and prepreg layers together in the right way to get to that thickness. Again, this is where consulting with your fabricator is really important because your fabricator may already have a solution that's gonna fit your specific thickness, whatever that thickness is, and they know they're gonna be able to fabricate it reliably, and it just might match the, uh, the dielectric characteristics that you need in your different layers. So if you look at data sheets and you want to you know, specify or pick out some preferred materials for your PCB stack up, uh, what exactly should you be looking for? In the previous uh, video that I'm referencing where we looked at uh, some of the technical data and data sheets, um, those same points apply here, okay? So you have your TG value, your glass transition temperature. Um, and then you also have the fiber weave style. This is much more important for high speed stuff. Um, so if you're designing something, you know it's gonna only work with low speed signaling like you know I2C or SPI or something, don't really need to worry about weave. If you're working with something much faster, high, you know, newer generation of uh, PCIe, weave might be more important. And then of course, the thickness 
or the available set of thicknesses, either as a core or as a prepreg, should be shown in the material data sheets. So those thickness values will generally be constrained. You can't just choose any old thickness for your prepreg. You can't just choose any old thickness for your core. And you need to make sure that you look up that technical data in the data sheets before you start going and designing a proposed stack up that you wanna get fabricated. The other important point is once you do, do look through your data sheets and you've decided on a stack up that you wanna propose for fabrication, and you've picked out the different layer thicknesses and you've arranged them in the way that you want, uh, send it over to your fabricator, make sure that they aren't gonna give you a no bid status, make sure that they can give you a quote and that they can fabricate it reliably. Typically, if they can't, what they'll do is they'll say, hey, here's a standard stack up that we can produce, it matches your specifications within 90 or 95%, however close they can get. And at that point, if you do need, say, 50 ohms impedance on specific lines, they'll be able to tell you, here's the trace width that you need on this layer to get to 50 ohms impedance. Okay, so what I wanna do now is just look at a couple of data sheets to show what kind of thicknesses you can expect when you're looking for a stack up. Um, so one data sheet that we looked at last time and I just want to look at again is um, the Isola 370HR uh, DK and DF tables. Um, and I, I bring this up because uh, if you actually look at their official data sheet, um, the thickness value isn't actually in the data sheet. Um, they do have it though very nicely broken down and listed in their, uh, in their uh, DK and DF tables. Um, so this is the dielectric constant and the dissipation factor tables. Uh, so as you scroll through here, uh, you'll see a number of different thicknesses. And so this is where you can start to pair up different core thicknesses. So here's your core data. And then if you scroll down uh, your prepregs and you can uh, pair up your core and prepreg thicknesses to get to the, the total thickness that you want. Um, again, your specific manufacturer may not support this specific laminate. Maybe they just don't have it in stock. Maybe they don't you know, put it through their standard process, whatever the case may be. Um, but if you do wanna propose a stack up, this data is out there for you to use. You can send it over to your fabricator and then they can tell you, yes, we can produce it. No, we can't produce it, but here's an alternative stack up that we can produce. Uh, just to show you another example here uh, from ITEQ, uh, here's another laminate uh, data sheet. And here in the laminate data sheet, they actually do nicely break it down uh, by different thicknesses. So here you can see the nominal thickness in mils and in millimeters. Uh, they also have the tolerances, which is very nice. And then they also show the construction. So here are these numbers for the construction. So 106 times one. Um, essentially, this is just telling you this is one sheet of 106 fiber weave construction and its thickness is two mils. So again, as you wanna, if you wanna propose your own stack up, you can go through this select the, the, thick, the, uh, the core and prepreg thicknesses that you think you might want to use and create your proposed stack up to, to send off to a fabricator. Um, sometimes what you can actually do is just ask the fabricator ahead of time, hey, what laminates do you use? What thicknesses do you have available? They might tell you and then you can just go and propose your own stack up if that's what you wanna do. Um, they may be able to produce it, they may not. Again, just check with them because the last thing you wanna do is pair up a bunch of laminates that you can't actually produce anything with. And the reason that's a bad thing is because uh, let's say you have you know traces that are defined at 50 ohms impedance. And if you can't get to the right thicknesses on those layers to hit 50 ohms impedance, after the layout is finished, you find that out, you then have to go back and change everything in the layout. Um, if you're not using the right design tools, maybe you're using like an open source program, um, it can be actually be kind of difficult to go back and change a whole big number of traces to a different thickness so that you can actually hit that 50 ohm uh, impedance mark, you know, if that's what you need to do. Um, so hopefully this uh, provides some, some context for what you need to do with uh, thickness values in your, uh, your material data sheets. Um, so make sure to check that if you are gonna propose your own stack up. And uh, again, you'll find all of that data somewhere on the, uh, the laminate manufacturer's site. Um, if for whatever reason you can't find it, you should be able to ask your fabricator. There's no reason that they can't provide that data for you. Or maybe they can't provide the actual data sheet, but they can at least provide you know, here's the manufacturer, 
here's the mod, or here's the uh, the uh, the, the uh, product line name, or you know, here's the the laminate number. Some some kind of information that lets you Google it, and then you'll be able to find it. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching, and hopefully this gives you some context behind board thickness and what you need to watch out for in material data sheets if you want to start proposing your own stack up for fabrication. Again, always make sure you send that stack up into a fabricator to make sure that they can reliably produce it. And if they can't, just make sure that they can send you something that they can produce so that way you can get started on your design. When you want to get started on your design and create your own stack up in your PCB design software, use Circuit Maker. Circuit Maker is a great program that you can use to get started building your circuit boards. It's got everything that you need to lay out a circuit board and produce manufacturing files. Don't forget to leave some comments. If you have any questions about layer stacks, if you have any questions about designing boards, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button because we're always gonna be coming out with more videos to help you be a better designer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to call your fabricator.